Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. We are finishing up our series today called Ghosted. Next month, we are going to be doing a series called Improve Your Serve. What does it look like to improve your serve? Serving your family, serving yourself, serving your community, serving the local church. Um, and then in October is going to be Missions Month. We're going to talk about global missions and local missions. And then November, I just decided right now during worship, November, we are going to do a series on worship. Is that all right? And I'll tell you why we're going to do a series on worship is because a lot of us don't know what to do when the words stop playing on the screen and it's just the band is just playing and they were like, okay, what do I do now? Hey, then we're going to talk about that. Let's learn. Let, let's see what that looks like. Even if you're not a musician, if you're not a singer, well, that's awkward. I don't know what to sing during those times. We'll, we'll do a teaching on that. Is that all right? We'll do about the different postures of worship. So that'd be November. All right. This has been, this series has been one of the most practical teachings on the Holy Spirit that I have ever heard. And I do pat myself on the back for that. Uh, it was not like overtly Pentecostal charismatic, but it wasn't also overtly Baptist either. It was like right there in the middle, factual things about who the Holy Spirit is and what his work is in the land today. If you've missed any part of this series, you can go to our website, and we have them broken up right in just my sermons. They're about 30 min 25 to 30 minutes long. You can binge watch the whole series real quick. It's not an issue, all right? Today, I want to talk about the function of the Holy Spirit in a believer's everyday life. What does a spirit-filled life look like? What should a spirit-filled life be like? So it's like, okay, I'm saved, I'm water baptized, maybe I'm even baptized in the Holy Spirit, but now what? What should my daily life be like? And I want to go to a passage of scripture that I believe, and again, you know I like to just challenge scripture. I like to challenge even my own seminary teachings that I received. And I want to go back to scripture and say, what is this scripture actually saying, not what does a denomination say? But let's just look at this passage and see, okay? And it's in Ephesians 5.15. Ephesians 5.15. It says this, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Now that's just a good business practice right there. That's just good business. Making the most of every opportunity. Listen. You must seize the opportunity of a lifetime in the lifetime of the opportunity. There's a lot of us who miss business opportunities because we're too slow to act. It says make the most of, don't be unwise, make the most of every opportunity. So when an opportunity comes your way, pray on it. Pray about it. Red light, green light, one, two, three. Do I feel a red light? Do I feel a green light? Right? Do I feel like I should stop and not do this? Do I feel peace to, to move ahead? Okay? I feel peace to move ahead. Jump on it. Jump on the opportunity. Right? Make the most of every opportunity. Time is short. It says, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Now, man, right there. That's just going to mess you up, isn't it? Well, I don't know what the Lord's will is. But what is God's will? We pray these prayers. We pray prayers of faith. Father, I thank you and I praise you that we are the healed of the Lord, if it be thy will. We close out these prayers as if we don't know what God's will is about healing, as if we don't know what God's will is about prosperity, as if we don't know what God's will is about love and relationships, and we say, well, you know what, I really don't know what your will is, so whatever your will is, be done. But then, whatever happens, it turns out, like, well, God, I'm not happy with your decision. I'm not happy.
happy with the way that this turned out. But didn't you close out your prayer and say, your will be done? Like, we're messed up, bro. Like, we're messed up in our minds. Like, we don't even know what we're actually praying or believing sometimes. I know. I know this is deep. We're getting there. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Now, watch this. Now he makes this shift. He says, now, do not be drunk with wine. Which leads to debauchery. That's just such an awesome word. It leads to debauchery. And you have to put an accent on it too or else it just doesn't sound as good. Debauchery. <laughs> debauchery simply means excessive indulgence in sensual pleasures. Giving yourself over to your senses. What feels good. What feels right in the moment. Now watch this. I'm going to break this down for you. He says, because it doesn't really make sense here, okay? He's saying, be wise. Make the most of every opportunity. Don't be drunk with wine. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? And he says, but instead, don't be drunk with wine, but instead be filled with the Spirit. And that's a capital S. He's saying, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing and making music in your hearts to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Has anybody here today ever been drunk? Don't admit that. You're in church. <laughs> Sinner. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak from what other people say being drunk is like today. <laughs> I, of course, would never have indulged in the spirits. I'm not even making fun of, like, I'm not making a joke of that. I mean, hey, listen, a lot of us in here, you ever try, like you go to a party or whatever, you go to a friend's house or you go out to dinner and someone's like, hey, you gotta try this, you gotta try this, you gotta try this. Next thing you know, you got a buzz from trying three different drinks, four different drinks. You're like, whoa, wait a second. He says, don't do that. Don't get drunk. At least it's debauchery, right? It's a gateway. It opens you up. So if you're drunk, is this fair? If you're drunk, you are intoxicated. Is that fair? Is that right? If you're drunk, you're intoxicated. If you're intoxicated, then you are under the influence of alcohol. Is that correct? Okay. So he's saying, do not be under the influence of alcohol, but be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Is, is that fair to say is what he's saying here? Don't be drunk with wine as an access. It leads to letting your flesh rule you. But be submitted to the Spirit and let your Spirit lead you. Does this make sense? Okay. Now, again, I'm not saying that I know any of this from personal experience whatsoever. But I heard that when some people indulge in alcohol, they might get a little silly. They might act silly. Um, some people act like mushy and kissy. Huh? See that? Some people become like the party animal. Some people get very angry and nasty. Like they're an angry drunk. Huh? Right? Is this fair? Like we're just saying what is happening in the world today? And we don't know this from experience because we're Christians. Well, we've seen stuff like this on YouTube. When someone is under the influence of alcohol or drugs, they act in a manner in which is not their normal demeanor. It's not their normal behavior. This isn't who you normally are. What did you take? What are you on? What are you doing? Yes? Okay. We need to ask ourselves a question. What reason, what reason would a person have 
to put themselves under the influence of alcohol. Why would someone do that? Why would someone want to do that? Well, I like the taste. You did not like the taste the first time you tried that. You lying. You let nobody like the taste of alcohol the first time they tried it. You did not. You spit that thing out. You're like, oh, I can't believe anybody would ever do something like this. But then for some reason, you went back and drank it again. I have a firm belief. And we're going to cut this out of my sermon on video, but this is for the room. You get to hear this one. I have a firm belief that if urine would make you drunk, people would drink it. That's true. That's true. And all the ones who are in recovery, you know that's true. You know that's true. I can't believe he just said that. I know. You ain't going to find a church like this. Why would someone drink alcohol? One, they want to act in a way that's outside their normal behavior. Maybe you're a little bit more prude, a little bit more reserved, but you get that one glass of wine, next thing you're on the dance floor. Oh! Hey! <laughs> and it was a mocktail. Like, we didn't even tell you we took the alcohol out of it. You had a Shirley Temple. Yeah, Breeze. You had a Shirley Temple, and then you're like, ah! <laughs> it wasn't for the taste. It was for something called the effect produced. The effect produced. I'm taking this for the effect it's going to produce. For, for who I want to be, or I want to get rid of a pain momentarily. I'm hurting. I'm depressed. I'm stressed out. I'm feeling anxious. I want to relax. I want to loosen up. We consume something for the effect produced. And in the early stages of alcoholic drinking, people often discover that alcohol produces a range of pleasant effects, all right? Because if it did not produce an effect, you know you would not have gone back and drank that. Like, red wine is disgusting the first time you try it. It's nasty. And then you have to, like, acquire the taste. It's an acquired taste. It just means you've dulled your taste buds so bad. Come on, somebody. I'm just being for real in church today. And these effects are often so elusive that people continue to drink even after their drinking has become a problem. Huh? So then the produce effect is now something that I have to do this every day just to tolerate my family. I need to have a drink when I get home from work just to relax or else I can't handle the kids screaming and running around. Now it's become a problem. Now there's this thing called dependency. Could that be what Paul is leaning towards here? Do not be dependent on alcohol, but live a life dependent on the Holy Spirit. Could he say, could he be saying, don't live a life that needs this effect produced by a physical consumption, but live a life that's effect produced by a spiritual consumption. Don't drink something that's momentarily, drink of something that's eternal. Here's a few of the effects of why people would drink and why people would become alcoholics. Stress relief, to feel relaxed, to loosen up one's inhibitions, even giving into peer pressure. There's people who are called social, social drinkers and they don't actually ever really think of consuming alcohol until they're in a social setting. 
And because they got these certain friends, and this is what we do, we go out on Fridays, that's when they drink, but then it goes too far. Come on, somebody. I, I know I'm reading somebody's mail here today. Many people say they need alcohol to have a good time. This is why when you go to a wedding, they open the bar first. It's their cocktail hour. During, I mean, really, it's hors d'oeuvres, but it's cocktail hour. And the dancing on the dance floor really doesn't happen until like an hour to two hours later. Because they want everybody drunk. So they'll go on the dance floor. Then the DJ can really turn it up. Like the whole dinner, you were listening to Kenny G. <laughs> now, unless you're really drunk, you ain't dancing to Kenny G. <laughs> you got a problem, you're dancing to Kenny G. We have Celebrate Recovery, and we have counseling services available if you find yourself dancing to Kenny G. Some people call it liquid courage. Pastor Mike, I cannot believe that you're preaching a whole sermon on alcohol. I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying to show you the importance of why Paul would throw this sentence in the middle of this other sentence that makes no sense for it to be here. It's highly important. He's saying, listen, in this world today, you are going to look for substances to numb your body. You're going to look for substances to numb your mind. You're going to look for substances to numb your emotions because the world is evil. Things are going wild. The times are close. He's saying it's going to be a temptation in the end. Right, didn't he say? Because the days are evil. He's saying be wise. Look, the time is short. Don't be drunk. You're going to numb yourself through the most important season of life. You're going to numb yourself through your kids' most important seasons of life. He said, you don't need that. What you need is the Holy Ghost. What you need is the Holy Ghost. When someone gets drunk, it loosens them up to the flesh. And you will go do stuff in the flesh that you would have never done in your right mind. If you're an angry drunk, you go and pick a fight with the biggest dude in the bar. For whatever reason, like, go pick on the little guy. At least you might have a chance of winning that fight. But you get that liquid courage, you're an angry drunk. You can't even swing. You're getting knocked out straight in the bar, drug out. Loosens up the flesh. And Paul tells us, do not live this life. And he's not saying it in a condemnation way. That's why I'm preaching it very light. And I'm, and I, and I'm laughing about it. He's not preaching it to us in a condemning way. He, said, he tells us, listen, I know what's going to happen in these last days. I know that COVID is going to stress America out more than ever before. The amount of relapses that have happened in the United States, alcohol and drug relapses. The amount of young people that we lost in NA groups that had to be canceled, unacceptable. He knew, he knew what was gonna happen when these times were gonna be short and when the days got evil. So says, America, we're going to look to numb the flesh. But he goes on to tell us this in another way. He says, a strong spirit will sustain you bodily. A strong spirit will sustain you bodily. A strong spirit will sustain you bodily. He says, so don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. He says, don't be Drinking too much spirits, consume the spirit. Consume the spirit. Isn't it funny that liquor is called spirits? Isn't that funny that we could catch ourselves consuming the wrong spirit? 
that we could find ourselves under the influence of the wrong spirits, that we could find ourselves innocently doing things that we would have never done because of being under the influence of spirits. I'm not gonna get no demonology today. I'm just saying it's ironic that we act in a way that's shameful and embarrassing that we do not want showing up on someone's social media feed the next day because we were under the influence of spirits. When someone gets drunk, it looses them up to the flesh, but Paul is saying, I want you to loosen yourself up to the spirit. He's saying the reason why most of us don't know that we even have the Holy Spirit is because we've never allowed the Holy Spirit to loosen us up to the things of the spirit. <laughs> to loosen our ears up to the voice of the spirit, to loosen ourselves up to the move of the Spirit. That's why, I mean, we're gonna talk about this in November. That's why a lot of us can come into church and we can be singing a song, holy, holy, you're the Son of God. And we're just like, I feel nothing. It's because you're not loosened up to the Spirit. You, you're, you're not there in the realm of the Spirit. Your spirit, man, is just kinda sitting there like, I want to. Could I get your mind out of the way? I want to. Can I get your flesh out of the way? Paul is saying to allow the Holy Spirit to be your stress relief. Allow the Holy Spirit to loosen your life up. Be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And so it, it's, he, he writes a very specific sentence here. Now we're gonna get into some Bible studies, all right? He writes a very specific sentence. He says, be, do not be drunk with wine. Be filled with the Spirit. Has anybody studied this passage out before? We can kind of confirm what I'm about to say. Okay. Various Greek scholars and Bible commentaries point out that this sentence here, be filled with the Spirit, is in the Greek present imperative tense. Present imperative tense. We don't have this tense in English. We have past, present, future, and that's it. The present imperative tense in, in English would kind of be combining present and future tense together. But it adds another element. It doesn't just say now and in the future. It just says now and continuously. Now and and ongoing, from now, ongoing through the future. We don't have that tense in English. So it, it, it has a connotation of a continuous replenishment, continuously being replenished of the Holy Spirit, an ongoing state of being. It's been suggested that it might even be this kind of awkward translation, ready? Go on being filled, or keep on being filled by the Spirit. And here's my favorite, be being filled. Now, I know that doesn't make sense in English, but if we understand present imperative tense, be being filled with the Spirit which means it's not a one-time thing. It doesn't mean that, okay, we came in, I came in Saturday morning prayer and I got filled with the Spirit and so like, boom, done, one time, Spirit filled. Doesn't mean that. But it also does not mean that I have to do something to get more of the Holy Spirit. Remember, everything that we discuss is called the work of the Holy Spirit, it's not the work of Mike McKelvey to get the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is that I am be being filled. Other scriptures say something like, his mercies are new every morning. Another verse says, out of them will flow, flow rivers of living water. You are not capable of shutting a river of flowing water. You're not going to hear that in another church. You're not going to hear that in another church. 
You're not gonna hear that. Because another church is gonna try to control your behavior. Another church is gonna tell you, you go say a dirty wordy this week, that source is dry. And then you need to come back, pay your 10% tithe, get forgiven. I mean, we're going back to Catholic, like penance, paying for your penances. That's not true. The work of the, the, work of the Holy Spirit is to be being filled in your life. The work of the Holy Spirit is rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Flowing. Geyser of gushing. You're going to hear a story in October of a missionary who drilled a well in Haiti. And he drilled the well at this exact spot where two bodies of water collided. I don't even know the name of it. I'll know in October what that's called. But where the two bodies of water collide, he drilled right in the middle of that where the water now just comes out of the ground. They had to put a valve on it because that water just flows with no pumps, no electricity, nothing. All the time, it's just continuously flowing. That's what this verse is talking about. When you're filled with the Spirit, don't be drunk with wine because, listen, you're gonna get drunk and it's gonna run out. You're gonna get the desired effect and then you're gonna be done, you're gonna have to do it again. But be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit, because it's going to flow all the time. It's always there. It's always available to you. Well, Pastor Mike, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true, because, you know, I feel dry sometimes. When have your feelings ever led you in the right direction? Remember, you're the one that was getting drunk. Because of feelings. <laughs> oh, you went and drank alcohol because of feelings. But now you want the spirit to meet you on a feelings level where it was never about your feelings. But how come I feel dry? You feel dry because you're still allowing yourself to be numb to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Just because you don't feel the Holy Spirit doesn't mean he wasn't here. I could have flat out laid on the stage today during worship. I could have flat out been like, oh, I'm in the presence of the Lord. And then there's other people who are like, man, they're going 15, 17 minutes. They normally don't normally about do 15. Good show. Good show, though. Good show. Lights are on point today. <laughs> that video of Pastor Josh, mm, creative. But felt nothing when others were crying during worship. See, your feelings, you can't, you can't gauge whether you're spirit filled by feelings. You can't, you can't know that the Holy Spirit's doing his perfect work in your life based on your feelings. Who are you? Who am I to stop the move of the Holy Spirit? Who am I to stop the flow of rivers of living water? Can't, can't do that. But I can be ignorant to what he is doing. I can be, and I believe this is the work of the enemy today. Here's what I believe the work of the enemy today is. I believe the work of the enemy today is to get you so distracted by iPhones, iPads, CNN, Fox, pandemics, masks, red or blue, black or white, so distracted by what we're pissed off about that we forget that out of our bellies are flowing rivers of living water. No, I have a right to be angry. I have a stop it. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's going to do his work regardless of you. I know, I know. For the person who wants to be works minded, the person who wants to say, it's about if I pray, 
It's about if I read my Bible. It's about if I behave, then God can do what he wants in the world. As if. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus, Jesus did not say, as long as Pastor Mike behaves himself, then the church will grow. He says, regardless of what idiot is on the stage, because we're all idiots, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The Holy Spirit's going to do his work in the land today. He's going to do his work. Be being Filled. It's continuously happening, whether you are aware of it or not. Whether you are aware of it or not, you are be being filled every day. I just want to know, what you doing with it? What you doing with it? Because you're going to spill over. You're spilling over somewhere. Come on, somebody. Come on, I'm talking to the person who's already spiritually burnt out. I'm talking to the person... I'm talking to the people online where you're already like, I don't even want to go back to church. That's fine. But the Holy Spirit's still doing his work in your life. Oh, it's continuously ongoing. Now, many theologians take this verse, and this is where we're going to argue. Many theologians take this verse. So B, being filled, C, so fill yourself up, fill, your, fill yourself up with the Holy Spirit every single day. I heard this one guy, is like, you know, my grass is, uh, if I don't water my lawn, my lawn is going to dry up. So I got to water it every day. I got to do something every day to, be, to, to keep my grass alive. That's true. That's true. But that's not the Holy Spirit. I didn't fill myself up the first time. I didn't fill myself up the first time. How can I keep topping myself off? I came into a place, I said, Lord, here I am. Use me. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he filled me with the Holy Spirit. He filled me with the Holy Spirit. He filled me with the Holy Spirit. Now, listen, man, I know, I know, I know how it feels right now, but it is not my job. It is not my job to maintain the Holy Spirit. I know, I know, I know. You like to take so much credit for it. You, we all like to take so much credit for it. I behaved today. I did so good today. I did this today. I was in control today. I know, we love it. Instead of saying, you know what? Holy Spirit, do your perfect work. Do your perfect work. Now, can I, now here, can we turn the corner for everyone who's already now upset at me? Here's your works. I'll give you your works. There is a way that we can be more sensitive to what the Holy Spirit's doing. We can be more sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is doing. I gotta find out where I'm at because I'm not even on my notes. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Paul again tells us, do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Listen, so it don't matter whether you know he's there or not. He's in you if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. He's there. Your feelings, your awareness, whether you feel dry or you feel the flow, he's there. Whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. If you are not your own and you were bought with a price, you don't have an option to how much Holy Spirit you have. Get what I'm saying? He's doing what he wants. He's moved in. He's remodeling. All right, come on. We're building this out. It's not my job to maintain the Holy Spirit. He moved in. He maintains me. I know. I know. We haven't heard stuff like this. Romans 12, 1 then comes along and says this, therefore, brothers, I urge you, brothers, just in the view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies then a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not be conformed to the paths of the world. Don't be getting drunk with wine as an access. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed 
by the renewing, be being, be being, renewing, be being renewed, be being renewed by our mind. Just as we need to be be being filled, we need to be being renewed. Be being renewed of my mind is my job. That's my job. It is my job to renew my mind to what the Holy Spirit is doing in my life. Yo, this is, this is such a practical teaching. You need to go back and watch this. You need to go back and watch this. You need to renew your mind daily to the Word of God. Let me just throw this out. When's the last time you read a self-help book? Like a 300-page book. And when's the last time you did that? Most people, 80% of people don't read a book, like a self-help or a teaching book, 80% after college. After college, they don't ever do it again. Actual books. So how are you renewing your mind to being better if all you're watching is the news, violent movies, and social media? You are not going to renew your mind to the fact that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and that he's doing a work in your life. Your mind is gonna be closed off to what the Holy Spirit is doing if you're never in wholesome things. Do you want your mind more in tune to what the Holy Spirit's doing? Get a verse. Get, get into a daily devotional time. Get, take out your phone and, and go on the Bible app. Find something that you wanna study out. Here's a challenge. Right in the, inside the Bible app, there is a one-year Bible reading program that every day it'll pop up what to read and you can read the entire Bible in one year. That's a great challenge. I ain't got time for that. And that's why we have the fruit that we have. Not because the Holy Spirit's not doing his work. It's just we're kind of in his way. We don't know what he wants to do. We don't know what the will of God is because we haven't read what his will is. He says, renew your mind to the word daily. Watch what he says here. Then, then you'll be able to test and to approve what God's will is. Good, pleasing, and perfect. Ooh, look how that came together. He says, you know what the will is? Okay, maybe you don't. Renew your mind to what the Holy Spirit's doing, to what the Word is doing, and then you'll hear from God more easily. You'll flow in the gifts of the Spirit more easily as you open your mind to the Word of God. Here's some things that I can encourage you. Not so much social media. Limit yourself to how much social media you're consuming. Not so much bad news. In your car, Listen to a healthy podcast and or worship music and have a daily devotional time with God. I'm gonna stand here and tell you straight out, um, my prayer time is never longer than 15 minutes at a time. I don't have that much to say. But I will pray 15 minutes multiple times of the day as situations come, okay? My Bible reading and devotional time is probably right around an hour. I like, to, I like to do that about an hour. And for me, devotional time is not sermon prep time. If I only read my Bible and studied for sermons, I'd be a starving baker. I'd be the one preparing meals for everybody else but never feeding myself. You need a daily time with the Lord. What does God wanna say to you? Most of us have a really bad relationship with God because we had a really bad relationship with our mom and dad. And so it's hard to sit there and talk to a God who's a father figure or a God who's a parent figure because I don't really want to hear what they got to say. We've got to change our views. We've got to have this renewing of the mind daily. And I'm going to tell you this. The Holy Spirit wants to do his work. The Holy Spirit's going to do his work. Would you be in tune with it? Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your word that it will never return to you void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to. Holy Spirit, right now, I ask that you continue to do your work. Touch on the hearts of those who need a relationship with you. If you are here today and you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, 
We'd like to offer that to you today. And here at Family Church, we do that with a simple prayer. And because we love you, we wanna pray it with you. And that prayer goes like this, if you repeat after me. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you're watching online today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you type amen in one of our chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to follow up with you and give you a six-day devotional called Starting Point. If you're in the room today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you allow me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds? Would you just wave at me and say, hey, Pastor Mike, I prayed that today for the first time. Anybody at all real quick across the room? I'm going to look one time. We're all family today. Amen. Awesome. Maybe you're here today and you're like, I'm not really sure about this whole Christianity thing, but your alcohol talk was funny. Uh, We do have a book at the Welcome Center called Welcome Home. It's a little book that talks about Christianity and what we believe here at Family Church. That same exact prayer that we just prayed is at the end of that book. If you'd like to have it, it's yours free um, on your way out at the Welcome Center just outside the doors. Father, we thank you today that your word will never return void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing your work in us daily, renewing us and refreshing us daily. Father, we know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that we are seated in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. We are made perfect in our spirits. God, help us to catch up in our mind. Help us to catch up with our flesh, that we would resemble God on earth today. We thank you, Lord, that everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Love ya. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at to get started today.